y'all back to Everett's Music Barn. It's been a long time. Uh, I've got a list here. It's a lot of good people that helped us out. We, uh, we decided we was going to reopen. We had to do a lot of work. And all these people, you know how it is when you tell somebody, if you ever need me, call me. Well, I called them all. <laughs> and here they come. I mean, they just, I couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, Joe Kimsey has been a big instrumental help to this thing. He furnished these speakers and all, brought all this equipment out. And uh, the good friends at Baker Audio let him use their vans and scaffolds and sent one of their field engineers, Scott Clark, up here to spend the day and uh, got all this stuff hooked up for us. Uh, Wally Alford's provided a mixing board and all for us. And uh, I thought Bobby Cleveland was going to back in the door with all mics and all kind of cord I'd never seen the like. And uh, I'm just going to read down a few names as we go. Clint Childers was instrumental in helping. And you know, I didn't know his name, Jerry Jones. He's been coming up here for a long time. It's embarrassing. And I found out he knows how to do plumbing. <laughs> and I, and I, uh, I think he works on every fixture we own. I think he did. A gentleman used to sit back here about midways years ago named Mr. Morris. He used to come for a long time. And I guess 20 years ago when we put it in the bathrooms, he brought us an old sink. He said, if you ever need this sink, use it. Well, Jerry Jones put that sink in out at the house. So it finally got used after 20 years. And uh, we were toting stuff out and filling up numerous dumpsters. And one of the owners, Kathleen, said, who is this gentleman? I said, well, he was up on the roof at the time, nailing on 10. I said, his name's Fred, but not really. And she said, what's his name? And I said, I don't know. And, uh, so his name on this flyer is still Fred. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Sylvia and Terry uh, Gilbreth come down and helped us, and I didn't know their name either. They were just out here cleaning one day. I didn't know who they was. Miss Joan Sasslin, she was out here knee-deep in the barn, hauling off stuff. And uh, Bobby and Mary Autry, I entitled my sister Renee. I said, I need your help. We had a couple of work days, and I told Renee, I said, it's up to you to provide the food. So she just called on a bunch of ladies from the barn, and you ain't never seen the lack of food they provided. They fed everybody. Miss Mary made a banana pudding. And uh, Don Norman, Darrell Wilson, and Ronald Wilson, uh, they come to the microphones, drove down here just... Ronald's ordered us all new mic stands, but they ain't here yet, so we're making do. Brother Mike Everett helped a lot, and Richard and Mr. Birch helped fill up a bunch of dumpsters. <laughs> and Elaine Deaton and Lanny Curson, I didn't know his name neither. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Miss Steve and Renee Everett McDaniels. Uh, Steve McDaniel taught us that if you take a big old dresser with a sledgehammer, you can put it in a place this big. <laughs> he, uh, Taught my son how to use a sledgehammer. <laughs> Diane Tate and Evelyn come in here and went to cleaning like you ain't never seen. They cleaned all the bathrooms, just been working cleaning. Russell and Tina Everett has helped tremendously. Russell filled up two dumpsters, I guess, by itself. I tell him to be here at 2, and I get here at 10, it'd be full. He stayed in the bed about three days this week, couldn't get up. Uh, Jake learned how to use a sledgehammer. They stayed in a dumpster about two days, my son. Jack Poston's got all his recording equipment back in place. Miss Connie English Bailey's back there with her mom, Agnes. They've been down working. Connie Renee's husband was real instrumental on in cleaning out the barn. Enough about that. And uh, Mildred Reed, been real instrumental. <laughs> Bill Wankel, every time we needed help, he'd come running. Steve Thornton and Thornton Graydon, I said, I've got a mess out here in the yard. He showed up one day with a bobcat. Mess gone. Uh, some of the owners' names I'll read off. It's John and Nancy Garrett. Excuse, yeah, John and Nancy Garrett and their families. Kathleen Webb and their families. Chris and Jennifer LeBeer and their families. These folks are blessings to us. And you know, I've worked on this list. My wife, Julie, just typed and typed, and I sent this thing in to Bill, who does all of our paperwork. Bill said, you happen to leave a name off, and it was Diane Dunaway. <laughs> yeah, ain't that something? I called Diane. 
<laughs> yeah. I called Diane back there. She's had a little trouble. It's down getting, getting better for us. Don't mind me. And uh, I told Diane, I said, get your notepad and pencil. You've got to go back to work. And so she's got bands booked through summer and more calling every week. And uh, we're going to be the same as always. Everything's the same. Everything's based on donations. Uh, tonight we've got about 75 recorded CDs back there. If you want one, go put some money in the bucket and you can have one. It's all about donations. It costs more now to run the place than it ever has. And with your help, we'll be here for a long time. It's I'd really like to invite everybody, if you can't this week, as soon as you can, go in the house and walk around and look at the stuff. The history's out there, the pictures, and that they have just done a tremendous job cleaning and fixing. And this thing is a work in progress every week. Things will be worked on. Things will get better as we go on every week. I'll bring Mr. Sarge on, and we'll get the boys out here and have some bluegrass.